Hi there, so I'm going to show you today how to get nice little animations um, in your states for buttons just to give them a little bit of finesse um, but also as a bonus just to teach you uh, kind of what to be conscious of when when doing stuff like this uh, when it comes to accessibility because you can you can open yourself up to a bit of a minefield if you're um, creating a button that you're going to duplicate a lot of times and um, you can give yourself a lot of fixes that you need to do <clears throat> if you're building an accessible course and you don't get it right on your first button. So I'm going to go through this with you now. So I've got up my two examples here um, of a button that we've already made and I've just started uh, making a new one now. So I've just made it a slightly different shape. And I've got some arrows ready to pop in it, which I just grabbed from the um, Storyline library in this case. Um, so it's these two here. If I search for arrows, so if you like those arrows, uh, just go arrow and you'll find them there. So I've got those um, here as well. So I'm just going to do a little bit of maintenance on these. So I'm just going to lock the aspect ratio on these um, so it makes them easy to resize. Um, and then, um, so this is what I'll be going through where we need to be cautious when we're doing this in the state as well. Um, so if you're not familiar already, um, unticking this means that this won't be read out by a screen reader. Uh, it's not going to need to be read out by a screen reader because they're going to get all of the, um, the screen reader will get all of the information it needs from its say next button, which is all it needs to know. It doesn't need to know there's an arrow in there. That's entirely decorative. Um, so they'll, they'll hear next button um, is kind of what a screen reader will read out. Um, it's not going to need to hear arrow icon one. A screen reader user definitely isn't going to want to hear arrow icon one because that makes no sense um, in comparison to like kind of what they're trying to trying to get from this um, from this car. So by unticking these, it means that the screen reader ignores these on here. It puts some code in to, to stop them being being read out. Um, so I'm going next that way as well. So we'll just give these a quick flip horizontal flip and then let's make a start on my button which I'm just doing as a just a shape uh, I believe yeah there we go so we go button next give it a name so I like to keep my timeline tidy uh, and then we'll start to get the text ready in there so I'm just going for some traditional open sans font on this which is uh which is perfectly fine make it a bit bigger let's go 18 and there we go i want to left align it um big fan of keyboard shortcuts so control and enter if you weren't familiar with it will bring up your format shape control enter and then if you would do control shift enter brings up the size and position. It can be a nice quick way to do that. I think I want 30. Yeah. Nice 30 um, 30 margin on that will be good. We'll leave that one um, visible to accessible tools because we'll definitely need a screen reader to understand that this is the next button and read out next in there, which is, uh, which is great. And uh, let's just bob a little shadow on it as well. I won't go over the top. Yeah, that, that'll that'll do. We we get in the idea of that. That's not what we're here to do today. Um, so I'm now going to add this arrow um, into the button. So we'll just pop it up there. So I've definitely removed it. I do like to double check that I've done this type of thing. And let's just bring it down a peg or two. Should we try forty? How does that look? I'm happy with that. So I've got a 10 pixel movement on mine for my left and right arrows. So we'll go 50 pixels in. Let's copy the... Actually, I think I prefer it all black. Looks more consistent then, doesn't it? So we'll leave it black. Okay, so that's ready, and I'm actually going to embed that in the state. So it's no longer part of my timeline. It's going to be part of this object. So Control X, and then I'm going to go and edit state. 
control V, it's in there and it's now embedded uh, within this database. So it's no longer a clickable item. It's kind of like it's, it's part of that button, uh, which can be very handy when we're moving stuff around um, and whatnot. It just kind of makes it part of the object. If you resize stuff, um, it can complicate things. Um, but it's but it's good for when you've got that kind of a definite idea for what it's going to look like. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a hover state to um, to demonstrate the kind of the animation side of things. I've got my other arrows ready here. Let's just get these um, a bit more ready. Well, I'm not too fussed if they're um, a little bit bigger than the other ones but because it sometimes looks quite nice when they're in a larger bit as well. Oops, don't want to move the single one. We'll do that kind of forwards effect as well so go right to the edge there. So they're ready to go in the state as well now. Okay, so here's where we need to be careful. So I'll edit the state and we'll create a hover state. So what you'll likely be familiar with, and if you're not familiar with this, um, animation trick the first thing you probably go to is go to animation and then you suddenly realize oh dear I can't actually do any animation on this but what we can do is is we can copy and paste the object um, and now our animations is open so we can actually do stuff with it which is great So let's make it look like the one underneath it. So I'm going to format paint that to get my positioning right. It hasn't painted the margin though. So we'll give that the same margin. And then we'll put it in the same position as that one. So it's now in there. And so let's give it a different color now. I'm going to go with do, do, do. Just undo that. this is the same color that we gave the last one. So I'll pop that in a slightly different color and we can give it a fade. So it just kind of fades in over the top of it. So the problem, so the thing that we've got to be cautious of with accessibility, here we come, is that it copies over the um, accessible status of it. So a screen reader could potentially get next button, next button twice. It thinks that there's two next buttons there because there's an object within this state that has this ticked as well. And even though it's embedded within the state, a screen reader will still find a way of getting to that object. So we've got to be very careful when we're um, putting objects in states and make sure that we untick it so it doesn't be read uh, so it isn't read by a screen reader you can imagine you duplicate this button several times sometimes um, format painter will work in a way where um, where you can just get it all right on one button and then um, format paint it across to all of the other ones and, and hey presto it all works fine but sometimes with the way that you copy and paste and put new objects in the state 
uh, it can sometimes break the functionality of Format Painter and not quite let it get everything over. So you actually end up going in and changing every single button, which can be quite a, quite a long task. So that's what you're going to be conscious of uh, when you're doing this part of it as well. So we want to add a nice little animation on this, um, but we need to still be conscious and make sure that the button is accessible. So we're just about ready now. Is it? There we go. And then we will pop a little animation on this as well. So fade, but from left. Double check that I did. Yes, I did. But I didn't on these. Oh, be careful. So when you've got objects in groups. You've got to remove it from the group because it'll say the group and then the two objects themselves. So that was a close one. We'll leave it black on this one. So let's see it in action. Oh, excellent. So there you go. A wonderful little method to add a bit of animation on your buttons. Um, but to also be conscious of how to make sure that the button um, is read by your screen reader correctly so it, uh, it'll only read the next button once. So thanks ever so much for, for watching and get in touch if you, if you want any other helpful tips.